Ya menginda, ya menginda, benu det dangkan ngaya, poga bila termalati. Today I will be talking about our involvement with the Atlas of Living Australia and the Garagal Women's Cult and Language and Culture Network. I would like to acknowledge the Kamilaroi traditional owners, the ancestors guiding us today, and our community elders providing us with wisdom and leadership. Our project is called the Garigal Project. It is a ULRI word, UL plus RI, word for gaps. Gara for gap and gul for plural. I am the lead linguist on the Garigal Project and work with Rhonda Ashby and Nat Raisback Brown. Today I would like to talk about linking traditional knowledge to Western science. Promoting Indigenous Ecological Knowledge, IEK, and most importantly, our, that is improving our women's health, well-being, and empowerment. The Garigal Project is a project of the Atlas of Living Australia and sp specific to the Kamilaroi Nation. Firstly, we will look at how we are promoting Indigenous ecological knowledge in the ALA by including language, linking our traditional science knowledge to Western science knowledge in the ALA profiles, and finally, by working with the women in our communities to collect and share this knowledge. We are building confidence, restoring health and well-being, and empowering these women to lead in their own communities. Firstly, we will look at how we are promoting Indigenous language through the Atlas of Living Australia. In August 2019, last year, we included Camilleroy words for plants and animals in the ALA. There's three Camilleroy languages, Ualari, Ualii, Camilleroy, Camilleroy, Camilleroy. There's multiple spellings of these languages. Our spellings come from local language custodians and IATSIS, the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies, um, Indigenous Archives in Canberra. Last year we included 690 Camilleroy words in the three languages for 300 and Four species. The Atlas of Living Australia is a free online biodiversity database. You can use the ALA to search for information about plants and animals. Here is the first page you see. You can add the common or scientific name from what you, for what you are looking for. For example, koala. This takes you through to a list of possible matches. Click on the orange word to get the, the species page about koalas and a map of where they have been seen and how many times these sightings have been recorded in the ALA. Koalas have been seen and recorded in the ALA 100,000 times. And there's scientific, lots of scientific information about koalas. The species page also shows you the, the scientific name. The common name. And now for the first time, the Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander name. We have the local name for the koala on the left, Guba. And the name of the language on the right, ULRI. To do this, the ALA work with me and other Camilleroy senior knowledge holders and language custodians, Harry White, Rhonda Ashby and Ted Fields Jr. And local ecologist, Michelle McKinney. She has worked with Harry White and Camilleroy for a long time. This is the area of the Camilleroy Nation across New South Wales and Southern Queensland this is one published estimation of the Camilleroy Nation map. This is Bogabilla at the top of Camilleroy, Camilleroy, Camilleroy country. This is Walgut on the western side of Uwalaroy. This is Lightning Ridge, home of Rhonda Ashby, who is on the Garigal team. 
With the inclusion of these languages, we can use local names now to search for plants and animals, such as Guba, which takes us to the koala species page. Or Bumble, Bumble is also known as the native orange and is used in all three languages, Ualari, Ualii, Gamilari, Gamilarui, Camilleroy. We are working with the ALA to make this easier to read on the on the species pages by listing a Camilleroy name only once and then listing its languages in a single line after that. This makes it easier when there is more than one name for the plant or animal. Now let's go back to the main page and search for dinner one. There are many names across our three languages for dinner one. Dinner one means Bigfoot in our three languages. Once we neaten up these names on the species page, it will be easy to see that we have three different names for dinner one. To find out what they all mean, the reader, will, the reader can go to the IEK page for dinner one. These pages are not yet available to the public as we are working with the community for consent to publish this knowledge on the internet. Rhonda Ashby and I shared this knowledge about Dinner One and we have given our consent for, it, for this knowledge to be shared with the public through the ALA. So this leads us to our second point, including our science in the ALA. We are doing that by creating online IEK Indigenous Ecological Knowledge pages within the ALA. Users will access these pages by clicking on, on the language name for the plant or animal, which when our knowledge is ready for publication, will be in orange. Click on Dinner One and go to the IEK page about Dinner One. These pages represent an online encyclopedia of our Camilleroy knowledge. The ALA has built up web, web pages specifically for our knowledge. This is how we will link our science to Western science. These pages contain information we have contributed. This page is for dinner one, the EMU. On this page, we outlined the three meanings for the three different names, dinner one, bugger bugger, and barke. Dinner one, adult, bugger bugger, striped chick, Bargay Chick. What does these names mean? And the information that is important to us, we use a different classification system than Western science. It is not so much based on the shape of the plant or animal. We tend to classify things into what does it look like, feel like, smell like, where is it found? What is its character? How does it act? What is its relationship to people, place, sky, other animals and plants? What is its relationship or importance to season? This is the information we are collecting through the Garrigal Network. This page is for Bumble, sometimes called native orange or native pomegranate. For this one, we include what it tastes like, what it smells like, and what the fruit looks like. We only include certain information that we are happy to make public. If people want more information about the plants and animals, they can come to us directly about that. And that brings us to our final point. The Gadigal Project is improving the health, well-being, and empowerment of our women. Our initial plan was to run language and knowledge camps for Camilleroy women in Walgett, Moree Shires in New South Wales, and then set up a women's network to keep the work going after the camps. Since May this year, COVID has stopped any chance we had of running these camps. But to our surprise, we have found the women's network is flying ahead in Toomla, Moree and Walgett. We wanted to include photos, but we do not have consent to share women's photos at this stage. We are working on this. 
This project has begun in Walgut and these women are now meeting weekly on country, learning and sharing traditional cultural knowledge with Rhonda Ashby. I meet weekly with other Tumla, Bogabilla or Maori women. How we are building the women's network. We reached out to different groups of women to introduce the idea of Garigal. Then we identified the strong leaders, women leaders, who we knew have the capacity to carry Garigal forward. Women who are interested and have a history in language, culture and community well-being. The women are creating their own space. This is important because they are not bound by organisational obligations that might restrict cultural activities. By starting the conversation with plants and animals, it's op it opens the door for other conversations about what is happening in the community. They talk about their issues and concerns. Working from someone with Working with someone from the community that they trust creates a non-threatening pathway back to language and culture. Women are shocked by how much language they know and remember. Plants and animals also take us back to country. This is important because we connect with our, with our own land, our own home and where we come from. Now we have rediscovered the healing power of native grasses. We use the ALA to help us find these grasses and other important plants and animals. The Women's Network decides what cultural activities they do. For example, in Tumala, they wanted to create a bush tucker and medicine garden. This led to investigating native grains for bread making, like Johnny Cakes, and linked our knowledge to Western science. Bread making is a core responsibility of all Indigenous women here and internationally. Other activities include weaving grasses and jewellery making from natural seeds and nuts. This connects us back to country. Creating a space to do this work, for example, in Tumala and Walga, we go down to the river. This get, gets women outside and out on country and connecting with plants and animals in a familiar, safe place. We are improving the health and well-being of Camilleroy women by using signs and culture for healthy foods and medicines, like with using native grains instead of highly processed white flour for cooking and reintroducing traditional medicines. There is a spiritual healing too from engaging with culture and country. That is healing in itself. Language is a vital part of the healing package. The women look really happy when listening to tapes of the old people. People they might have not have heard talking since they were children. It takes us back to a time when we were happy children growing up on the mission. It reinforces our identity and makes us stronger. The network is healing because it gives gives the women hope. There is sustainability that comes from the network. They know that if they fall over, there is someone there to pick them up. By rec recognition of the roles and responsibilities of the women and remembering their place in family and community as women and as matriarchs. One thing that came through the Native Grains workshop was an elder talking about our elders. She is an elder in her community and she spoke about the importance of her elder who is 96 as someone she goes to for support. Being an elder is about being a leader and about respect. Good to see that elder um, status and good to show the women the importance of their roles and their responsibilities as women. It's important to include the men too. There is a space for them also. Cultural activities support women socially and emotionally. Engaging with plants and animals on animals on country is spiritual healing. Knowledge is a two-way street. It is bartered, not just given away. There needs to be a trade, especially with non-Indigenous people and organisations. There need, needs to be mutual benefit. For example, we have this knowledge and you want it, but what do you have to give us that will benefit our community? For example, the women from Maury shared their knowledge about plants for weaving and healing. We shared our knowledge and language about these plants. This benefits us both. Thank you for listening about the Garigal project. And if you require further information, please don't hesitate to contact us through the Atlas of Living Australia. Thank you.